Welcome back. Well, uh, let's get uh, some conversation going on about what transpired in the, in the House yesterday. We've got uh, Honorable Uzoma Nkema Bonta, former Chairman, House Committee on Public Accounts, joining us from our studios in Abuja. Good morning, and thank you for joining us today on the program. Well, this scenario leaves a lot of questions, and to some extent, a lot to be desired because many now ask, yes, it was supposed to be a probe of the NDDC, but the way it's turning out, now they're asking questions of the members, uh, the House of Reps, in fact, the legislature, as a matter of fact, saying, how did they get themselves here? Because uh, the regard that the narrative should be for the National Assembly is being eroded. This is not the first time, remember? The scenario with Fesus Kayamo, and now you have this. So, what's going through your mind at the moment? How, how did you get here? Oh, well, what we are seeing is uh, brazen, it's unspeakable. It shows the level at which um, uh, there's disdain for the legislative arm of government. I would liken it to, or what I would call, the continuation of uh, executive uh, rascality. Uh, be it as it may, uh, legislative arm is an arm that is empowered to do the necessary things, like you've quoted copiously at 8 and 89 of the Constitution, uh, subject to people's human rights, I must say, but for uh, ministers or people or persons appointed by the executive who are summoned legally to come and defend their actions or what was entrusted on them to work out on parliament shows uh, a great, it speaks volume uh, and it should be curbed because if it continues to go on, then we are going to face um, a total breakdown of uh, law and order. I don't see how uh, a head of a process or an agency or a minister, so to say, will ordinarily work out on parliament. You can express what you don't agree, you can have your uh, uh, mindset, you can say a thing that say, look, I don't agree on this. But to get up and walk out and damn them means a total disregard and it, it's a rape on democracy. It's an insult on the parliament. It means you're disregarding a constituted authority. Of course, legislators are an arm of government mm. who but what, should what about ordinarily regulate. Can you speak to or monitor the, the reasons and in course of doing that constitution? Just, just hang on a minute. The reasons why that happened. Because uh, can he normally just do that if they didn't have their facts? Because he accused the head of that committee of grafts, of several things, as you heard in that report. So he says, look, that should be investigated. Remember, this is not the first time that the members have been, or uh, at least a member has been accused of grafts, uh, doing something illegal. So... Isn't that the reason? Is this reason not justified why he had to walk out? He can't justify that. Like, we started at the same time, said, look, with the committee, we are just hearing this of the first time. If you have any complaint, make it available. He also said of criminal activities against NDDC. He ought to have stayed to say, you did this, that, 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 A, Y, Z. Therefore, we are not going to make a presentation and then find out what will be the reactions of the committee. You merely said the thing. And if you said nobody can give a point of order, nothing like that, you, you, can, you, you watched the clip again and stood up and took his book and left. Well, let me give you an example. It had happened in some other area, times and so on. For example, I also watched when you talked about Arumote. Arumote talked about Hembe and sat quietly to watch her dad come. She never walked out and stormed out. Play the clip again. You see how brazenly they stormed. That means, what can you do? You go to hell. That is no, what but for. What, of course, what, what, it's what? right to say because of what we think of you, we do nothing. We get fair hearing. Therefore, don't chairman this and watch and see. But he never even stayed to get a reply, a response of what the committee will do. You don't no, just but, but, uh, uh, you, 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 you know court, for that example, through your lawyer. And members of the NDDC had been accusing members in the House uh, who had chaired several committees of the NDDC of graft over time. And if they didn't have any reason whatsoever, uh, why did the Senate change course? They changed a little strategy in going on with that. So why didn't the House follow suit? That is what they will ask for. But if you say that you are not appearing before the committee, watch what he said. We don't think that this chairman should be the, uh, the chairman. Otherwise, we're not going to make a presentation. At that point, he ought to have 
kept quiet and stayed and watched what would be that come on then say but to work out that means you worked out on the committee which is a continuation of the uh, uh, sittings but you didn't work out on the chairman you would have said i'm not going to talk if this man is presiding but i agree with you that the house ought to have come back and say okay this is what we're going to do we're, we're going to ask the chairman to step aside or otherwise but to work out without giving the house any uh, uh, um chances of revealing what he said. After he said an allegation, we I called upon and said, can we have the particulars of the allegations? Can we have the kind of graft? It's not just put a blanket in. Adam Mote said, Mr. Hembe, on so so day we gave you a man to go and do this. Did they do it? On so so we did it. But so we need to know, it's just to come to say, we are not going to see because you've done some criminal activity. You should give the particulars of it and watch what the house will do. See it in their wisdom. At the floor of the house, say no, let us use ad hoc committee to do this investigation. Quite good. Mm -hmm. I would also suggest that, in fact, that the Senate and House should even do a joint sitting in the same National Assembly to do this investigation. Because from what we also hear and read, and from the uh, uh, um, testimonies coming out, we don't have to sweep anything under the carpet. We need to do our oversight function. More so, this is an investigative session. The House at the plenary gave that committee the functions to go and do. If, however, NDC does not want the chairman, fine. It is their right to say, we do not think we can get justice from you for the following reasons. And give us particulars of the reasons. It's for us to have an in-house as okay, chairman, this is what we think or otherwise. But he never gave us a, a, a chances. He rather argued and said, no point of order here, you can't do anything, and stormed out. It is brazen. It is not good for our democracy. It shows uh, a, a extension of executive rascality because he came there by virtue of being appointed by Mr. President. So well, if, if, if you talk about the control of executive rascality, if you talk about the executive rascality, or what about those who think that there's also legislative complicity? Because I mean, if you heard all of those things, if Senate did something, why did the House have to wait up until now? There are several members of that committee in that committee who could have even had an ad hoc or chaired it such that this would not happen. So they said, you brought this on yourself in the first place. Oh, no, well, I agree with you that they can make a complaint and say, we are not going to sit before the House. It's coming for the first time. But in the manner of presenting that complaint wasn't that at all. Let me tell you, we've known people accusing houses severally, just like accusing anybody, just like accusing Mr. President. If we look at those accusations, then are we going to share away from our duties? If he said, not, uh, mind you, he never complained about the whole committee. He said the chairman will have no problem, but the chairman will not sit. Therefore, he will wait and see what we're going to do. Meanwhile, that investigation had gone um, almost um, 90%. It's not mm -hmm. the same chairman he appeared to do the budget. But, you know, that's the thing. So, because even if he went 95%, as long as there's a loophole that there are issues that they can, of which they can raise questions, you give them an opportunity to do that. So as it is now, what do you think should happen with that investigation, having been faced with these allegations that have been raised by the NDDC? Think that the House should do an in-house work, either excuse the, uh, excuse the chairman and then continue. Because I don't want to say it's an attempt to buff or stop the the investigation. If I don't want to join issue with the Nunes attempts to be uh, uh, um, kidnapped, so to say. Therefore, since uh, he said we don't want the chairman, we will think whether the chairman will step aside and then the investigation continues. Except he's saying the whole committee or the House shouldn't do it at all. But um, if you don't want a judge, you will complain. Either the matter, the judge is transferred and so on. Are you complaining about the whole court? The complaint is not against the whole committee. Therefore, I think the wise thing to do is to excuse the chairman as a deputy. The other but you know, members, it, it, isn't it time... They will go on. So the investigation it, will come. Isn't it time for the members to have a word amongst themselves such that uh, they don't portray or give any agency of government any reason whatsoever to even have opportunity to raise these kind of issues. Because we're talking about how many issue incidents in less than a week or two, wherein agencies of the executive arm of government have questions of the legislature, which has got to do with uh, graft. So it doesn't leave a good image for Nigerians who elected the members to do a job for them. I agree with you. 
the issue of graft should also be investigated. Nobody's above the law. They should come up with a particular. Let me give you an example. That of Festus Kayamo. We all saw it. Was that graft or procedure? They called him to question him on the manner of employment. And he said they want to hijack it. No. And if you talk about representation, who represents the people? If you're employing 1,000 persons from a local community, well, and you think members should not be part of it, and saying, do you know the poor people in my home? Are you in a better position? Is first time better position to know the poor people in Akwete? Okwa. You know? So if it's graft, please, they sh should be investigated. Members, senators should be investigated if you think about graft. But if it's purely administrative matters or supervisory matters, fine. Now, in this present one, I don't know where they complain about graft. If they do, it takes two to tangle to graft. If they come ask you for graft, please report to the agencies. Make it public. Adam Mote said, Mr. Hembe, so, 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 so happened. Did you travel? If you didn't, and so on, so on, you demanded for this. They should come forward with it. Did Kayama say, ask him for money? Or anybody? Did any this chairman say, members of the committee asked him for money? If he said the uh, uh, chairman asked for money, they should make it available. Some of us will find others who don't want so. Well, they were questioning the conduct of the members of the national, members of those committees that were asking questions who were supposed to be oversighting them of ulterior motives. So, as it is now, where does this leave this investigation? Just like Mr. President asked for a speedy completion of it, I should think that. The committee should take cognizance of the complaint of the NDDC, remedy it, and go on. Because, except they will succeed in their attempt to stall the investigation. Otherwise, if the chairman is the problem, he sets as, he sits aside. And mind you, it's done publicly. So you will see why is it is a public investigation. So the people will not see is there anything that is done unethically and so on. So the way forward, I think, is. If the NDC says we can't see the face of the chairman, we don't trust him, he will ask him to the side, let the investigation go on. That's what we are saying all members of the committee should not be there. Why do you think the members Otherwise, of the public, why should the members of the public have faith in the legislature to handle this one, especially if they remember how uh, the Herman Hembe matter went and one wonders what became of that allegation against them in the first place? No, oh, there are two different scenarios, if you look at it. Now we are specific in what we are saying. Here, he made an allegation against the chairman. The committee is the people who, are, who, who understands the ongoing. That is their committee. They oversight them. They know what they do. So they've asked them now to do the investigation, and they are going on. And they came up to say, we don't want this chairman. It's the rational thing to do not to say, chairman, OK, you step aside so that we go on. He is one person in the panel of more than 20 or 30 persons. He is one person. Others give their testimony. Accountant General came there. CBN came there. Auditor General came there. The banks came there and supplied material, papers, and so on. They never talked about the conduct of the chairman. But if they have issues with the conduct of the chairman, fine. He let him sit aside. And then the work gone. It was completed for the benefit of Nigerians. And it's done publicly, well, so we'll be able to see. Meanwhile, the asking of figures and paperwork. Mm. It's figures and paperwork. Put them together and tell them and show us what did you do with SEY's fund. It's on ground. And look at procedures. And that's all. Okay, well, I think Mr. President was asking about uh, speedy completion of the forensic audit. So whatever else the House or the National Assembly is doing, I think it's always up to them because I don't think he can direct the House of Assembly or National Assembly to do certain things. But let's get a legal perspective on this matter as well. We've got Mr. G.T. Ogunye, a legal practitioner, joining us on the line this morning. Good morning, Mr. Ogunye. Uh, thank you for joining us and giving us at least your time to speak on this matter. Could you tell us, having seen or read perhaps uh, the way or what transpired in the National Assembly yesterday, wherein the acting MD of NDDC had to walk out on the House Committee investigating this matter, accusing the chairman, Honorable Ojo, of having, having uh, guilty of some crimes and such. They didn't think they would get fair hearing by the committee chaired by him. Now, in that context and the action taken by the NDDC to have walked out, 
is that the best thing they could have done? Is it within their rights? And should they have walked out on that committee? That should have happened. Um, by the benefits of uh, international uh, television programming, we can see what happens in other uh, climes, particularly in the United States, uh, whose uh, presidential system of government we copied. Uh, we see how hearings at the Congress is uh, conducted, and we see how people, you know, periodically are sent to prison for lying on that before Congress. Roger Stone has just been pardoned by the United States President uh, Donald Trump. Uh, he was accused of lying before Congress on oath uh, and was sent to prison for that, was prosecuted for that. So uh, we, we need to take government more seriously. The last sphere uh, that governs government affairs in this country is, is a cause for worry, and in particular, uh, what happened uh, before the legislature was a desecration. That shouldn't have happened for a government agency. I mean, sometimes the National Assembly uh, overreach uh, themselves by inviting civilians to appear before them, particularly when they are criticized. So when they do that, well, we condemn them for that. You can still recall how the city was trying to uh, harass Professor Isesagi uh, the other time that should come before them for criticizing them. But for a government agency that is under investigation, I mean, it, it's so ridiculous that that kind of thing could have happened, walking out, that because they have opportunities. If you are accusing uh, the leadership of that committee of uh, bias, of uh, not guaranteeing fair hearing before that committee, you... you, you can work out. You can put your thoughts on paper. You can hire a lawyer. You can do many, many things to protest to the leadership of the House of Representatives that look you lack confidence in that committee in this leadership, and you provide particulars. I mean, that's not a, a motor park. That's that, that's not that's not a village care meeting. You mean a village care meeting? People behave in a more decent manner. And, 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 and what's going on, if you ask me, is, is a manifestation of general, uh, of a general way of doing things, of, of uh, you know, conducting government business. And, uh, so many would then ask about the quality of the people who are in governance. For instance, now, I mean, they've also said, look, they don't see the president ever walking out on the National Assembly whatsoever, no matter the situation. So why will agencies of government do this? Now, the statement that was released by the president where he talked about speedy uh, conclusion of that uh, forensic audit and the rest of it, should he have spoken about this or should there be some sort of at least reprimand or an action taken against any government agency who acts in such manner which the president will not conduct himself in? I recall that when the president was uh, presenting the budget before the 8th Senate, this is the 8th National Assembly, uh, the last time, not this time around, there was a particular session, uh, you know, after he just came in from one of his overseas trips, and I can recall that, there was so much terrible heckling, noise-making in, in the in the National Assembly. The president could have used that as an opportunity to walk out. See, if a former military man, you know, and they supposed to be short-tempered, right? But he didn't do that. And people commended him for that, for being state manly, right? So I'm saying that when this kind of thing happens, it's not just sufficient for the president, who is the executive president of the country, uh, who was voted for, Many of the people, whether minister or all these people doing all this stuff, one voted for in this country. The appointees, the one voted for. So in terms of representative democracy, the one, the primary 
uh, beneficiary of a mandate. And so they ought to be more responsible. And so the person that we voted for has that duty to say, this will not pass. This will not happen. So that when acts like this, uh, you know, are done, that there should be some kind of censor, some kind of sanction, some kind of administrative reprimand. So it's not just sufficient for the president. And I'm saying this doesn't a responsibility to just issue a statement. No, don't do this. Don't do this. The president is an executive president. He's not an advisor in chief. He's not supposed to be occasionally giving advisory on how, you know, government affairs should be conducted. He's supposed to take action and swift action when necessary. I understand that, you know, uh, sometimes the members of the legislature, the way they do, particularly in terms of carrying out oversight function, you know, visiting agencies and all that. Some of the agencies have always been complaining about when they want to visit them for oversight functions. And they'll be run all over the place. Ha, ah, our representatives are coming. Um, the chairman of my committee is coming and all that. What that implies is that they'll be running around to get money, to get envelopes. And, and these news get out, right? But I'm saying that in spite of those possibilities, in spite of those allegations, in spite okay. of uh, you know, the fact that we know that this can happen, kind of thing all right, we, really happens. We, all right, we, 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 we appreciate your thoughts this morning, uh, kind of, Jiti Ogunye. Thank you very much indeed for talking to us this morning. Honorable Abonta, uh, let me get back to you as we wind down on this one. What is the committee's thought or position on what transpired in Port Harcourt, where the acting um, uh, former interim ND, uh, Joy Nunye, was supposed to appear, and you know th th there was a failed, it turns out, it appears as though it was an abduction attempt which failed. What is the position of the House on that now, the committee? Uh, oh, well, we are trying to also get her, the, the House will want her to come and give her testimony publicly to the hearing so others can also ask her questions direct and live. We wanted to also say, do it online, do it visual, but should that not work out, we'll get her to come and talk. Was it failed? Why would they want to stop her from appearing to testify? You can see, you can read underline it. So our position, or the House position, or the National Assembly position, the Nigerian position, should remain that she should come and talk. She's a necessary person. She's a necessary witness to testify what happened. What did she do with that with part of fund? Because she had been the ex-MD. During the time of her tenure, in the short while she served, what did you do? What happened? She had knowledge, so she must come to talk for us to conclude the investigation. Of course, now, we'll be hearing all the publications and all what not. We'll read, we'll see. So she should come and present it, so we can also ask questions to verify the veracity or otherwise of what she's claiming. Just one, some quick one before we go. Since there's, uh, the president has spoken about this forensic audit, so if that's going to happen and it's concluded and then there's a report of such, why is the House or the National Assembly looking into this? What's going to become of their report if there will be a forensic audit? Listen, it. the House is looking at from January to date. Forensic is looking 10 years behind. We are looking at the money appropriated for January till date. That is the mandate of the Committee. We're not going backwards to 2019, 2018, but the forensic is say 10 years behind. Why we are looking at a particular period, January to now, where we said over 80 billion naira can be accounted for. So we're not, forensic is doing theirs. Well, we the have also do that. It's continuous. Our is oversight function. Well, right. do, do you agree with, with let, let me put this in, to July? Do you agree with those who say that, you know, perhaps these investigations, uh, the House, they're not usually able to put their foot down as they ought to because their members get contracts awarded to them by some of these agencies who then feel, look, if I've given some members contract or given them some sort of jobs, why are they questioning me? So that weakens the legislature. I will insist that the legislature should put their foot down. If you give a legislator contract, mind you, some legislators may be their businessmen before this time, or otherwise, or their constituents are doing business and whatnot. But the issue is, don't go and give graft to a member because you think you, uh, he's supervising you. 
prove the facts, show them, bring them, expose such things. You shouldn't overreach yourself by your office. That's All right, criminal. now, number we, that is we thank you for but your that, thoughts. You don't use that to say... Oh, pardon me, we're out of time. We should on not do our uh, functions. We do thank you very much indeed. That we hope that all of this is sorted. Honorable Uzoma Kemal, Chairman House Committee on Public Accounts. We're back in a moment to talk on a very uh, interesting matter. Don't go away.